down. There it is. All right. Hey. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, I was having some technical difficulties there. So I got it on my phone, so now I can watch. The screen over there is just a spinning circle of doom, so I don't know what's going on here. But uh, cheers, everyone. Uh, having a nice drink here. Buffalo Trace. Good stuff. Um, I have a camera on my Helix screen here and uh, also obviously one on me and what I'm going to do is do a review as I've done in the past. I've done many reviews of you know presets, Kemper profiles. I just did the uh, Synmix presets for the, the uh, Helix a couple weeks ago so uh, check those out. So it's not uncommon for me to do um, reviews of such things. I mean, it happens all the time. Um, so a little backstory as to what brought me here. Um, a friend of mine, well, yeah, he's a friend of mine. Um, he, we became friends since, uh, he started calling me a few days ago about some, uh, an issue he had. He, um, reached out to me. He, he watches my channel and he also watches EVH and gear TV's channel, which is Eric Broadbent's channel. And, uh, excuse me, so he, he reached out to me and he's just, you know, via, uh, you know, um, uh, email and he said, hey, I'm trying to load these presets that I got that are the Pasadena Proud presets that I got from that guy on EVH and Gear TV. Are you familiar with him? And I said, uh, yeah, yeah, I know who he is. And uh, he said, well, I'm having a hard time loading him, loading them. And I reached out to him to see if he could help me, and he said that that's not his responsibility. So he said, is there anything that you can do to help me? So I said, I'll see what I can do. And so, and then it kind of sparked something inside of me where I was like, well, I didn't even know these were out there. Um, I like Eddie Van Halen's tone, and I figured, hey, I'll go ahead and uh, check them out myself. So I went to Marketplace, and I bought them. And I had the same issue that this gentleman was having. I had an issue with loading them in my Helix. There was an issue with uh, getting them in there through Marketplace. So what ended up happening, I had to go in and register my um, HX edit or, you know, uh, with Marketplace. And that's what solved the problem. So I finally loaded them in. And I was kind of excited to check them out. And I figured I would do a review of them. Because I did a, a video a while back on uh, the rabbit hole and how a lot of times us digital modeler guys and digital processor guys, we, we buy presets or patches or profiles, if you're a Kemper guy, for our units so that we don't have to do all the work. We can just get something that's pretty much pre-made. We drag and drop it and we trust that it's awesome. So it saves us a bunch of time and we can learn from them. Uh, and use them for a blueprint for doing stuff in the future. So, uh, you know, so I did a review, I, or kind of an episode about that, and um, something I touched on in that episode was um, buying presets that sounded amazing, um, you know, online, but when you get them, there's something missing, and you kind of feel like you got duped um, or catfished <laughs> for presets. Now, um... That's not the case with the Pasadena uh, stuff because it sounds exactly uh, in my Helix as it sounds sounded in Eric's demo. There's really no difference. It sounds exactly the same. Um, so uh, he didn't do any magic to them to make them sound different or better or, or whatever. Um, but what I did find was, um, well, let me just do some some playing for you. Uh, first, let me say hi to some people and then we'll get into the demo and then we're going to get into the workshop after that. So let me say hi to some people here and um, we'll, we'll move forward. Uh, the Law, Jamie Trevino, what's happening, man? He's a good buddy of mine. Awesome guy. Dookie, okay, things got better. Would you speak up, please? Yeah, I was way over there trying to fix my stupid computer, which is still spinning, by the way. Stupid piece of crap. Um, What's up, Dookie? How you doing, man? Um, yeah, uh, and Carl? Have a Synergy Savage coming. You know what's funny is the the title, I can't change the title for some reason. It's not letting me go in and do it because the computer's just sitting and spinning. So the, the title's a little uh, uh, off. I'm not doing a Synergy Amps uh, thing tonight. I'm actually re reviewing the Pasadena... 
uh, profiles that Eric Broadbent released from EVH and Gear TV. Um, so uh, I'm going to have to go back in afterwards and change the title. So I apologize for the title being weird, but my computer's literally spinning right now, so I can't get in there to do it. Um, uh, Aaron Lucas, what's happening, man? Okay, Meg and I are watching, the law says, from her birthday, or from your birthday party. She said Meg's here. <laughs> oh, hey, Meg, how you doing? Okay, so let's just go ahead and get into these. We got, um, how many people we got in here? 11, 11 people watching. Hopefully that grows. If not, that's fine too. Um, so because I'm drinking uh, some whiskey and some water, I'm going to have to take a bathroom break in a few, but no big deal. Only takes a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and get into these. Uh, so this is the Pasadena Proud, which is apparently Eddie Van Halen's uh, brown sound. So this is based off of like um, his, his sound that he used um, in the first album all the way up to probably Jump or something like that. I'm just kind of guessing. So let's go ahead and play these. I have them set up exactly how, you know, I, I downloaded them. And then we'll, we'll talk about it. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, um, feels very lackluster. Let me look here. Oh, good, there's an overdrive. Let me click that on. See what we got. <laughs> Now, because of the whole copyright thing, I can't play any Van Halen riffs, otherwise I'll get a copyright strike, so I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to play just basic tire-kicking riffs tonight. Sorry, nothing exciting as far as the playing goes. Uh, TJ Richardson's here. What's happening? Um... Let's see here. All right, so, uh, so far, um, you know, I'm kind of finding these to be pretty lackluster, to be honest with you. Um, uh, let me let me go to let me go to Driving Fifty Five, which I guess is the Sammy Hagar era tones. Oh God. <laughs> Is there an overdrive here? No, no overdrive. Uh... <laughs> I know I'm playing a seventh string, but I'm not even touching this string. I'm just touching the, the bottom six. So in case anybody wants to say, oh, they're not made for seventh strings. Not even using the seventh string. All right. Let's go to... Now I'm just giving you, like, my first impressions here. This is the Modern Truth, which is apparently his live sound that was used off of um, their last live... Uh, video um, or you know live uh, you know concert that they recorded and that you can get this one's a little tighter all right I'm just gonna give you my raw thoughts about these uh, first of all these literally sound like the cartoon version of Eddie Van Halen's tone in other words, like if, if Eddie was to be on a guest on a Saturday morning cartoon and it's like, oh, here comes Eddie Van Halen and he's going to save the day with his awesome guitar playing and he starts playing. This is literally what I think it would sound like on a cartoon. These are so slathered in chorus and uh, reverb and there's no pick attack at all. 
Do you hear that? You hear how dull that is? There's no chewiness. Like there's no like pick digging into the strings. And this is a seven dollar pick, you know. Um, and you can't say it's the guitar because it's not my thirty three hundred dollar guitar that I'm playing either. Okay, it's not that. So, um, and these. <laughs> These are not good. These are really not good at all. I mean, there's there's no pick attack. There's no rage. There's no fullness. Um, I mean, Eddie Van Halen is known to have like killer tone, um, except for two albums, O E Eight One Two and Fifty One Fifty. Worst tone he's ever had. Unforgivably bad. Um, but this is even worse than that. To be honest with you, it's. It's so bad. There's no sustain. There's no feel. I mean, I literally, this is a $3,300 guitar, and I feel like it's a Hello Kitty guitar. That's what it feels like to me when I'm playing these. The strings feel dead. I almost feel like I'm playing a nylon strung guitar because there's no pick attack. There's no grit. There's no bite. It's, I, I, literally, I feel like I'm playing a nylon strung Hello Kitty guitar. If there is such a thing, that's what it would feel like. And honestly, like seriously, this feels, there sounds like cartoon. Like if you were to start a parody van, a band, like uh, I want to I want to start a band that makes fun of Van Halen, like kind of like a parody Van Halen band, this would be the tone I would use because it's kind of like an exaggerated, like funhouse mirror version of what Eddie's tone is. It's just really thin and lackluster, and there's no there's no body to it. There's no fullness. And I, I kind of feel like I showed up to Guitar Tone's house and said, "Hey, can Guitar can Guitar Tone to come out and play?" And and chorus is like, "No," uh, but you can go ask Reverb, and Reverb's like, "No." It, it, it's <laughs> it's literally like I can't hear the guitar. All I hear are horribly uh, uh, dialed in effects. <laughs> Seriously, tell me, tell me that sounds, you know, like like a freaking uh, guitar, you know. Hang on one second here. Hey. What? Fuck. When did it go down? Like how far into it was I? It's down. Is it on my end or your end? <laughs> okay, cheese, man. All right, thanks for checking on me, though. <laughs> oh, all right. I, a buddy of mine just called to say my stream was down, so I just... <laughs> okay, so let me get back on there. <laughs> all right, th thanks, man. Bye. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Uh, Darren Moore, let me say hi to some people here. Uh, Darren Moore, not even close to the modern truth. No, you're right. It's, there's no aggression. None. Um, Aaron's saying Van Halen. Yeah, it's supposed to be Van Halen, but it's not. It's literally like, I don't know what it is. Like I said, it's like Saturday morning cartoon Van Halen. It's, it doesn't sound like him at all. And I'm telling you, if he had to play something that felt like this he would have gave up a long time ago these feel terrible they absolutely feel terrible i feel like i have to fight the guitar to get it to do anything it's it's like stuck in the ditch and i got to push it out it's so bad i mean i'm really um thanks chad everybody's saying it's still on so um oh here comes nocturnal butterfly who is eric broadbent's wife and she's in here you know trying to stick up for him, um, you know, whatever, that's fine, I'm just speaking the truth, you know, if you don't want your products reviewed, then don't make them, and if you don't want people to say bad things about your products, then make good ones, okay, I'm just sharing the truth here, you know, uh, I'm sharing the modern truth here, you know, these aren't good, okay, so tell your husband to make better profiles, and maybe um, he'll get better reviews, 
This is what happens when a guy that sits in his house doesn't perform, doesn't record, doesn't tour, and he's surrounded by, uh, you know, digital gear and has, um, you know, his little yes man circle review his pro profiles for him and his presets for him and do all of the quote unquote beta testing uh, for him. And all they do is just tell him it's amazing. Maybe they fixed a few things. I don't know. But these don't sound good. Okay. They don't. Okay. If I'll, I'll put it to you this way, um, and you can pass this on to Eric if you want. Um, if I were to base my purchase, whether or not I was going to purchase a Helix on these profiles, if this is what the Helix did and what it sounded like and felt like, I would absolutely say hard no to the Helix based on this. You know, I would not buy the Helix based on if this is what it sounded and felt like. Okay. I just wouldn't. You know, uh, they're just, they're just not good, you know, and I mean, on my channel, I don't say I like things just to say I like them. And I don't say I don't like them just to say that either. I basically just review things the way I want to review them. It's my opinion. And it's based on me owning the Helix for three years. I don't know how long Eric's owned it, but I've owned it for at least three. I, I was the first guy in Michigan to get them. It's probably been longer than that. It's 2019. Yeah, I've had it for, I think, almost four years now. I think I got mine in 2015. So, um, so I've had it that long, and I've um, played many shows with it, recorded with it, many band practices with it. Uh, and I also own a Kemper, and I also own the Synergy stuff, which are real tube amps. And, um, you know, I know how amps should feel. And this doesn't feel like that. I literally feel like I'm playing uh, a, a very cheap um, nylon string guitar. That's literally how these feel. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, here, here's the thing. Let me, let me just say this about the whole, uh, you know, selling presets thing. And I'm not going to bring up big companies that you sell them through. Um, but what I will say is if you're going to sell presets and ask for people's hard-earned money for them, um, you're kind of like, you know, you're an ambassador, okay, of the brand and the product that the brand makes, okay, and the person that's buying these. You're basically saying these are legit. Now, if you make presets that sound and feel, you know, lackluster and they're just not very good, well, the problem is if you do that, it makes the product look good or look bad. So if you have a bad preset that makes the product that it's in look bad and sound bad. Well, what does that do for the brand that made that product? It doesn't make the brand look good either. And I think that it's a very, um, uh, it's a huge amount of responsibility if you're gonna go into a certain marketplace and sell your presets for money and have them associated with the product and the brand that made that product. And I think it's very disrespectful to make things that just don't sound and feel good and represent the brand and the product that it's in very well. I just don't. I think that you should do more research and have more people check out your stuff uh, so that you, um, you know, you can have uh, a better, you know, your, your purchasers can have a better uh, experience with it too. And, and so will you because you're making killer stuff and you're getting great feedback on it and it's just a win for everybody. But um, I just don't see, uh, and by the way, Jamie, uh, can you share this in the Helix group? Uh, you know, I, I forgot to do that. So if you don't mind sharing this in the Helix group and letting me know that you did that, I'd appreciate it very much. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, I just think that this doesn't speak very well for, um, you know, uh, the brand or the product. Uh, when you when you're playing something that feels and sounds like this, I mean, come on, give me a break. Does that sound like a big, fat, roaring, ridiculous guitar? No, it doesn't. It sounds like a very thin, um, lifeless guitar with um, twenty-year-old strings on it. I mean, it just doesn't sound good. It doesn't feel good. And honestly, if I was to name these, I would call them the Pasadena cash grab presets because it's almost like a guy that's got a bunch of uh, followers on YouTube 
um, decided to make um, some presets where he can make some money, which I don't begrudge anybody for making money and putting the hard work and their efforts into making something amazing. Um, you know, uh, make all the money you want. I, I got no problem with that. But have some respect for your audience and your followers and make something that's actually good. You know, that's what I would do. You know, that's what I would recommend for people to do. I mean, make something that actually is good and have people that you don't know review them and uh, before you release them and do some beta testing before you release them. How do you do that? Send them to your friends that you know and then have them send them to their friends that um, and just do it anonymously so that you can get true feedback um, coming back to you so that you can uh, have a better idea of what's real instead of having your you know your yes man circle review them and just give you a couple of pointers to make them sound possibly a little better and tweak them here and there but it's just it's just not you know i i would not go on stage with these i would not go in the studio with these i mean they're literally just very thin sounding and you can't blame the guitar you can't blame me you can't blame my pick you can't blame my hands you can't blame all that stuff it's just you know <laughs> And here's the thing, the reason why this is so like near and dear to me and it's kind of strikes a chord with me is because I was actually a victim like, you know, four, probably about four years ago um, of buying some presets that sounded amazing on YouTube. And once again, these sound exactly like they did on YouTube. So I'm not saying there's any trickery here, okay? But the, excuse me, the situation I had with these other ones that have no association with, um, you know, these at all, um, where they sounded amazing on YouTube. And I thought, man, I'm going to buy these. And it was 25 bucks and I bought them and they absolutely sounded and felt hollow and terrible and thin. And, uh, it was awful. And, you know, and you can't get your money back. You're kind of screwed. You're like, well, I'm out 25 bucks and I just got these things that sound terrible. And then you start, like, asking yourself, like, is it me? Is it my fault? Uh, is it, you know, is it something I'm doing wrong? And then you reach out to the person and you're like, hey, so, I'm, you know, having issues. Did I do everything right? You know, and they go over, like, yeah, you put the impulse responses in here. Yeah, I did. And, and you lined everything up this way. Yes. Okay, so you did everything right. Okay, it must be your guitar then. I mean, tone is in the hands. Um, it's probably your guitar. I use this guitar. You use that guitar. I, you know, I'm sorry, but a guitar can make a little bit of a difference. Um, but I, I, you know, not that big of a difference. In fact, if, if you want to go that route, this guitar should make them sound even better because it's a very expensive guitar and it's well-made and Ernie Ball makes the best guitars out there, you know? Uh, so how can that really have that big of a bearing over it? I can understand needing to tweak the presets a hair, to make them sound better here and there um, because you have a different guitar than the other person. But to have a complete, like, this is 20% of what I thought it was. You're not going to pull the rest of the 80% out of your guitar to make them sound better. It's just not going to happen. You know, it doesn't work that way. Um, so, you know, I mean, so let's let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Let's Let's find out what's going on here underneath these presets so that we can uh let's go down to the raw tone of the guitar amp and see what that sounds like and then you know see what's going on there because it all starts with a great guitar tone right it doesn't matter how many effects you put on top of it if you have a crappy guitar tone to begin with you can put a hundred effects on there and it's kind of like putting lipstick on a pig it's just it doesn't sound good it doesn't feel good effects aren't going to change that all they do is muddy it up even more so let's go ahead and go to uh the modern truth i'm going to go in and i'm going to turn off all the effects and see so that's the raw guitar tone right there do you hear do you hear any pick attack there do you hear how dull that is? There's no digging into the string. There's no aggression. And Eddie's tone is very aggressive. Even back in uh, 78 it was. I mean, the first few notes when he was 
doing the palm muting on Ain't Talking About Love, you could hear that pick just slamming those strings. And you can hear the dirt and the grit on those strings. And I'm not hearing that here. You know, and I know this is the modern truth. I get that. But I'm just saying, like, even with even with the modern truth, like, his, I just listened to, um, while I was watching uh, Buses today, I listened to that whole live album of their latest album. And it, it this doesn't sound like that, you know, at all. There's no aggression. There's no fullness. There's no rage. You know, I'm not hearing any of this stuff, you know. Um, so, um... So, uh, Jamie, did you share this in the in the Helix group? Put some effort into it, Jared, she says. Oh, okay, let's hear you play a song, Nocturnal Butterfly says. Well, you know what, Nocturnal Butterfly, I don't want to play a song because this is very uninspiring. I mean, I all I need to do when I want to check a guitar tone is just play a couple palm mutes and a couple of chords, and I know whether or not it works for me. I don't have to play a three-minute song. Okay, I know whether or not it works. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay, so do you play guitar or are you just in here trolling me? I can't even get pinch harmonics on that. Barely. just no aggression there's nothing um so i mean it, this basically again this is just another example of like you know what what happens when you go and you buy guitar tones from people um and you hope that they're awesome and and they're not you know i mean it's not okay so it's not that oh i just don't like these and um but i can fix them and i can do stuff there's nothing redeemable here you know, it's just, it, it, it just doesn't work. I mean, I don't care who you are. You can't tell me that this guitar tone works. So, all right, so let's do this, all right, let's do this. Now, I spent uh, five minutes last night creating a tone uh, because it's very easy to do in the Helix, and I'm going to show you what I created in five minutes um, that I think would be a much more, uh, I don't know, good representation of just a good bass guitar tone. Not bass as in bass guitar, but just a good starting point for guitar tone. And as you can see there, there it is. Um, you know, I just put an EVH fix just so I remembered what it was. So here you go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a couple of tire kicking riffs and you're going to hear how the pick digs into the strings better and you're going to hear a fullness. <laughs> You hear all the picks digging in? Now 
Now that's with the stock cabs um, in the Helix. So that's just stock cabs, everything's stock, no external pedals, it's all internal everything on the Helix. And that's the, uh, the Placator amp, okay, which is based on the HBE by Friedman. Okay, so remember this. Okay, and here we go, back to Pasadena Proud. Okay, if you can't hear a major difference between pick attack, fullness, size of sound, rage, and just overall great guitar tone between those two patches, then I'm sorry, with all due respect, you need your hearing checked. You know, um, there's a massive difference between these two patches. And it's not a massive difference in taste, like, oh, well, that's just a different sound and it's a different taste. It's a massive difference in quality. It's a massive difference in what people look for in guitar tone, okay? Um, I want something to have a big, full, rich tone. I don't want it to have this hollowness, and I don't want it to sound small. I want it to sound big, and this doesn't sound anything like all of those things that I just said. So here's the thing, too. Like, honestly, if you want to create a Van Halen tone, um, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people out there will be completely happy. Like if they come see you play and you have a good solid tone uh, to start with that you like, that you that feels good to you, that supports your style of playing and it, and, and it sounds huge and it's just got a nice rich kind of great pick attack and fullness to it. And all you got to do is put his effects on there. You just put, I mean, in the Helix, you have the script phase, which is basically Eddie Van Halen's phaser you just drag and drop it right in front of the amp and you're done okay there's the that eruption kind of thing that he did and it's right there it's dialed in the way he uses it and it's perfect you put that in front with a good tone and the whole audience is going to be like yeah sounds like eddie van halen you know i mean that's literally all you have to do and the the flanger same thing you drag and drop it make a few adjustments and you got eddie's flanger you know put some delay behind the amp and you're good. And so here's here's what I did. Um, you know, here the uh, oh, before I go on, I'm going to show you uh, what it sounds like with an impulse response. I reached out to Live Ready Sound and I said, hey, I'm going to do a little project. Um, you know, can't talk much about it right now, but w would you be interested in making me uh, um, a five impulse response pack so that I can use it to you know, sound amazing in the amp I'm trying to dial in. He said, yeah, sure. So he made it. And after the video, I'll post the link below where you can get it. And it's an amazing impulse response pack that sounds killer. It's a Mesa dual rec impulse response uh, with vintage 30s and two microphones. It's got the Royer and the 57, which is my favorite combination. It's most people's favorite combinations because it's got that full bottom end and the mid range. And that's got that nice cut that the 57 gives you. So you get this killer, really nice uh, uh, sound and I'm going to show you what that sounds like now. I just got to find the preset. Um, give me a second here. I think it's this one here. Yeah, there's the impulse response right there. So this sounds incredible. Do you hear the pick attack now? That's what I'm talking about. It's rich, it's full, it's fat, it's aggressive, and um, it's the same amp as the Placator Dirty amp, and uh, it's got a really nice impulse response after it. So I, I say you get that pack. It sounds good on any amp. It's very balanced and full. There's no holes in the tone, so it's very, very balanced, and it's got a really nice richness to it. And you can, you can hear the note and the, the, the palm muted kind of thing going on at the same time. <laughs> Great string, string separation. I mean, it's all there. It's great, you know. So, um, and I believe on this one I dialed in some stuff. Uh, was it on this one or the other one? Let me let me take a look here. Uh, let me see. 
EVH fix. Yeah, right here. There we go. We got the delay. I dial in some ping pong stereo delay. <laughs> You hear that digging of the pick on there too? <laughs> Sounds incredible. Great delay and it doesn't slather all, all over the, the tone. You can still hear what I'm doing. It's not buried behind, underneath all that stuff. Um, so, and then here's the chorus. That's how you dial in chorus. It doesn't sound like the, the guitar tone, the main tone is just buried beneath all these effects. It has a really nice, um, like a little bit of a sheen, but you get that nice, um, that kind of fullness and um, the that modulation when you're hitting the lower strings. But you notice the pick attack still there. So there's that, and then uh, so we'll go ahead and bypass that. Try on the flanger. <laughs> Sounds great. Very simple to do, you know. Uh, and then there's the script mod. Let me turn that on with the delay. And I hadn't really touched any, any of these that much at all. The script mod is untouched. It's just drag and drop. There it is, you know. Simple, very easy to do. So does that sound like Eddie Van Halen? Yeah, I mean, you just put the effects in there and you get a good tone that you can work with and you're done. You don't need to, you know, uh, you know, get an amp that just sounds terrible and then, and then just cover up all that terribleness with effects. Start out with a good tone. Start out with everything sounding good to begin with. And then the effects are just the icing on the cake. They're not the thing that's covering up all the... I don't know the the lackluster feel and sound. I mean, there's the amp right here. All right, so there's the placator dirty. Um, you have the drive at 4.7, the bass at 4.4, mids at six, treble at five, presence at 6.4, channel volume at 7.5, uh, master at seven. I crank the master just to you know juice the amp a little bit more and make it work harder. Sag at zero. I hate sag. Um, everybody's different on that. I just like something really tight. Um, I turn the HBE uh, on and the C45 and saturation on as well. And I just think it sounds incredible like this. Um, the Ripple and Bias and Bias X are all pretty much straight across the board. You know, uh, I didn't change those. I could. You can change those and make the amp act a little differently. Um, and I know that some of you are thinking like, okay, well, if you're so smart and you're taking, you know, you're judging these uh, patches and stuff, let's, you know, why can't you dial in something that sounds like Eddie Van Halen? Well, let me just, let me just resolve that right now. And I probably should have done this earlier before I went into, you know, what I did, but you can't do it. Okay. There's not a profiler or a modeler out there that can give you exactly what Eddie, Van's, Eddie Van Halen's tone was. You know why? Because he had an amp back in 78, shoved into a room with a Variac on it, and he cranked that thing so loud, no one could be in the room with it, and it was almost to the point where it was bursting into flames when he recorded that album. You can't get a modeler that's going to resemble that it just doesn't work that way and that's not any disrespect to modelers or brands making them or anything like that it's just even they know that 
you know? It doesn't work that way. And I'm not trying to be a purist here or snobby, but this, this is what I want to tell you. Get a tone that works for you, that sounds amazing and feels amazing and supports your playing. And it's not hollow and thin and airy. And then put enough effects in it to enhance the tone, but not to cover up all the things that it's lacking. You see what I'm saying here? There's a difference between being corrective and creative when it comes to doing guitar tones. I'd rather be creative than corrective, okay? So what I do is I start out with a really good tone on an amp and I basically make it sound amazing all by itself so that anything I add to it just makes it even better. It's just like, oh my God, I just added the flanger to it and it just sounds incredible. Oh, I added some delay. Now my solos just sing and there's this really nice, you know, bigness to them and I got the stereo ping pong going on and I love how the notes, when I slide out of a note, I can still hear it spinning around the room because I leave the trails on. Um, you know, and stuff like that. And you always add an overdrive pedal because it pushes the amp, it makes it tighter, and it gives it a better response to your playing. I'm not seeing an overdrive pedal on two of these presets here, and I just don't know why. Eddie Van Halen has his own overdrive pedal. It's the, you know, it's, it's his own preamp module, you know, pedal that he has. I mean, why wouldn't you put that on there? I know it's a little bit like an amp in the box, but it still works to push an amp very well. So I would have put that in there and I'm not trying to sit here and dissect somebody's stuff, but I'm just saying like, look, uh, well, maybe I am, maybe I'm dissecting some stuff, but here's the thing. I do gear reviews. I do honest gear reviews. I'm not a sycophant. I'm not a yes man. So, um, if somebody asked me to review something, um, now Eric did not ask me to review these. Okay. It was somebody else. I didn't go looking for this. Someone brought it to my attention and I said, all right, maybe I should check these out, you know? And so that's what I'm doing. And uh, I just think that um, when you're doing beta testing and when you're doing, when you're creating tones for people that you should be extremely uh, hard on yourself and you should get people that are gonna critique this stuff and be extremely hard on you too. And um, be honest with yourself. And don't take advantage of your audience. Don't take advantage of people that you think, well, they'll just buy anything I put out, you know? Um, I'm not saying that that's what's happening here, but what I am saying is that um, if I didn't know any better, these sure feel like that's what's going on because seriously, they're not good, you know? They're just, I mean, come on. Let me, let me play a little more of this and I'm gonna switch back to I'm going to switch between the patch I created and then back to the other one, okay? And then I'm you tell me which ones you like better, okay? And I want to see it in the comments here, okay? So let's let's go ahead and do that. Um, you know, uh, so here we go. Let's let's do mine. All right, this is mine, just raw, and this is mine without an impulse response. <laughs> Okay. I mean, let's be honest here. There's a huge difference there. And so let me go back. I'm going to go through each one of these. All right. So here's my patch again. <laughs> Now let's go to uh, driving 55. Really? All right, let's go to EVH fix again, which is mine. Now let's go to modern truth. It's airy, it's non-responsive, there's no pick attack, it's flat, it's flubby, it doesn't sound big and full, um, you know, there's really no substance there, there's no meat, you know, I mean, if my preset, which I think is, and I'm not patting myself on the back here, like I said, this took me five minutes to do, it's easy, if this thing, if this thing sounds like a really nice thick piece of fudge to me, this 
sounds like a really thin chocolate wafer. If that paints a picture for you, like I said, this is literally like the cartoon version of Eddie Van Halen's tone. You know what else it reminds me of? It reminds me of like, you know how you get a keyboard and it has like a guitar sound on it? Um, and you like pick it and you're like, oh, cool, a guitar sound. That's what it sounds like, kind of like this is what a synthesizer, a keyboard, uh, guitar, you know, simulation sounds like. <laughs> It's just, you know, let me turn on the lead sound. Now, that felt a little better, but it's still not. It's, I mean, it's very, it's very soft. Do you hear how the chorus and all the stuff that's in there, it just softens it up so much? There's no bite. And I can tell you right now, like if you're on stage with this, the sound guy would be freaking spitting nails right now, trying to get you to sit in a mix properly because you'd be buried. Because here's the thing. <coughs> the guitar tone it's in this in this preset. The raw guitar tone is buried underneath all this stuff <coughs> and it's dialed in. So that it's got no fullness um, or attack. And uh, so that you take that and put it on a stage with a drum, a drummer, a bass player, a keyboardist, and a vocalist. It's gonna get it's already buried, now it's gonna get buried even further. And now the sound guy's gotta turn you up, which means what? He's turning up all that other stuff too. <coughs> so now you have this very overly processed guitar tone and struggling to get through the mix. You know, this, I'm, I'm just, I'm just really disappointed. And, but, but here's the thing, and I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but I'm not shocked because every time I get a preset by, by somebody, they're, they're never good, you know? And, um, uh, these again, sound just like they did in the video that, uh, of his demo, you know, but, uh, the, so I'm, I'm not saying that there's trickery. There's no trickery here. These sound exactly like they did in the demo. It's just, when you get them, they feel terrible. And I'm literally like pulling stuff out of my guitar. I don't feel like my guitar coming with me. I feel like I gotta work it, you know? And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like working my guitar. I'd rather have it help me. I'd rather have it, in, you know, help me. Like, it's a symbiotic relationship with me and my guitar. We're both working it together and there's no, I'm not pulling stuff out because when you're playing fast, you don't have time to, you know, grit and grip and like pick hard and stuff. You got to go fast and usually fast players have a light touch. I have a, I have a medium to light touch because I, I, I'm not saying I'm the fast world, but I try to go pretty fast. And, um, when you're doing that, you can't play hard. You can either play hard or play fast. You can't really do both. There's, there's weird guys that could do that, but you know, that's, that's another episode, but I want a, a, a profile or a, a preset or a, you know, whatever I'm playing through to support my playing. And this isn't just a taste thing where it's like, well, it's just not for me. You can't sit there and tell me that there's, um, there's stuff that's lacking here. You can't sit there and tell me, uh, that you can't hear a major difference between what I've dialed in and in five minutes and what, um, these presets are. There's a huge difference. There's a smallness there. So let me read some of these comments. Um, okay, so Sheikah's Sweet Majesty. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's one of my favorite guitars. Um, okay, so Nocturnal Butterfly says, No hate here, none whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I sent sand in the... What? In this chat, in this video. No, it could be just me. Okay, some more passive aggressive, you know, things. I, I don't really care what you think, so um, your opinion means nothing to me. Uh, tone is horrible with these presets. Way more, way too much pitch detune. E EVH TV loves saturating his tone with chorus. No, you're right, Justin. I mean, and again, I'm not trying to be cruel here. I'm just being honest. 
you know, it's just, there's so much pitch detune. There's so, it's such a high level. And even if I turn all that off, let me go, let me go to, uh, so that way, let's, de let's debunk that right now. Oh, fine, turn all that off. Okay, let's do that and see what we're left with. There's the analog chorus is gone, pitch detune is gone, delay is gone. So this is raw tone. <laughs> Let's turn the reverb off. Let's go down and do that. You really think this is what Eddie Van Halen's amp is like? You really think that that's it's this lackluster? Mr. I want everything to go to 12, the hell with 11. This is the same guy that turns his amps up and almost sets them on fire. This is the same guy that blows tubes constantly on tour because he's got everything so cranked and so biased out. It's insane. This is not what Eddie Van Halen's amp sounds like. Listen to the single notes. This is, I mean, I almost feel, I keep checking my volume knob. I keep thinking my volume knob's on my guitar. That's what it sounds like to me, you know? And I don't need to play songs and do a bunch of fancy riffs to figure that out. I mean, we all have our tire kicking riffs, and these are mine. I just play chords and do some chugging and some palm mutes and stuff and some rakes, and I, that's all I need to do. You know, I don't need to go on a family vacation to see if the car is going to work for me or not. Go around the block, take it out on the highway for a few minutes, come back. It's good or not. You know, I don't need to do that. So. Yeah. Um, so even with all that stuff off, the bass tone, the starting out tone of, of this uh, VH Driving 55 is lackluster and it doesn't work it just doesn't work you know um let's go to let's go here and let's bypass that that go okay i think it's just it's a ton of it's a ton of effects. Yeah, this it's just lackluster, you know. Um, uh, so, I mean, if you guys are looking for really good presets. I just don't, I don't think these are it, you know, I just. Yeah, there's the, all the, all the um, effects on here, just softening things up too much. I would, I would definitely suggest going back to, let's go back to this. There's your pick attack. So go ahead and put the delay chorus. Turn the mix down for rhythm. Thank you. 
so there's my fix and then there's uh let me see let's go to uh the one with tim's impulse response from live ready sound <laughs> Okay, I'm going to read a couple comments here, and I'm going to get off in a minute. Um, ben Burnett, you are killing me. I'm laughing hysterically. Uh, let's see here. Ben Burnett, glad to know that I am not the only one that thought these were terrible. Glad to know that I am the only one that had issues loading them. Yeah, I had issues too. You know, um, I had to figure all that out. Um, let's see. Aaron says, after watching this, line six should pull the EVH presets. Clearly just a cash grab, not something looking to pay tribute to EVH or Inspire players. Yeah, I mean, they're just they're just not that good. You know, um, they don't feel good. They don't sound good. There's just a lot of things lacking. And like I said, if you want your guitar to be buried in the mix, I mean, get these. Because they're slathered in and uh in effects and the thing is is uh like i said if you're gonna make stuff and put it in the marketplace you know make sure that ask yourself this ask yourself this if you're gonna put a product in marketplace all right whether it's fractal helix you know you know uh line six uh kemper whatever you're gonna do think of it this way if a customer buys it or if somebody experiences that product with your preset or patch or whatever you want to call it, if it's going to make them want the product or not want the product, think about that for a second. You know, will this make you want the product? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then it's back to the drawing board. Go back to the drawing board and create something better. Um, if the answer is yes, then put it up there. Again, there's subjectivity to everything, but for crying out loud, make, so, make something that's at least at a certain level where people would really enjoy it. And I get that sometimes you got to tweak things to make it better, but for, you know, I would say that uh, you know, you're better off just starting out with something amazing, you know, with a good raw amp tone, and then going from there and adding your effects to it. So I think that that's probably the best way to do it um, because honestly, most people that I've talked to and I read in the, the messages and the forums and the Facebook groups and everything else, everyone's like, I just create my own presets because mine are just more to my liking and I, you know, it's just, there's just less mystery in there. Now, um, that being said, I think that um, some of these presets, even if they're not to your liking 100%, what is nice about them is that you can use them for a blueprint of um, like, well, at least I know how he dialed in the effects and how he arranged them and stuff like that. And um, that would be really cool to be able to um, check that out and at least use the blueprint aspect of it, which I think would be awesome. Now, I will say that the effects like the, the, the phaser and the flanger I dialed in very nicely here. I, I like them. I like them a lot. I don't know if, if there was anything he did with um, the uh, phaser because I'm pretty sure that the script mod is pretty much what Eddie's settings are. The flanger, I know he made adjustments to, and out of respect for him, I won't show those settings here. Um, but uh, that, that does sound amazing. And if you, if you create a patch where uh, you put it on a momentary switch, you can just you know put your foot on it and it does its thing and you let off and you don't have to double tap. He did that, and it sounds really cool. So I will give him props for for that. Um, the phaser and flanger do sound amazing. They sound pretty much like Eddie Van Halen. I mean, I would say that in some aspects, um, the effects do pay homage to it. Um, it's just the amp tone and feel that doesn't. Um, 
you know, I just say just take the effects down um, or basically just, you know, what you could do is you could you could use the patch and then dial in your own amp and maybe lower some things on the effects. And maybe that would, you know, that would make them workable for you. Um, but as far as uh, as far as I'm concerned, like what I would do as far as me, I just dialed in my own stuff and dragged and dropped uh, the uh effects that I liked and just dialed them in the way I like them. And I think they sound phenomenal. And, you know, I just think that that's probably a really good way to go too. So you have two options. You can grab these presets. I think they're 15, 15 bucks. And then you can kind of tweak them to your needs. Um, or I don't know, use them as a blueprint or if they really do work for you, you know, I mean, go for it, you know, uh, you know, but if if uh if not you you might want to just start over and just dial in your own stuff and enjoy that so i think that's probably the way uh to go but it it all depends you know um so let me see if catch up to everybody here um the law of variax chokes and a runaway bias yeah he's talking about how eddie got his uh his tone i mean it's it's you can't get it through a um you know a a modeler it just they don't do that you can't vary like a modeler <laughs> you know you can't you can't choke a modeler you can't push a modeler you know they're just they're digital products so there's just stuff that happens when you do that to an amp that a modeler can't pick up the only exception to that would be maybe if you profiled or modeled the amp in that state but have fun being in the room with that thing when it's doing that. I mean, geez, it's like a, it's almost going to be a fireball. So um, I would say don't forget to paste and copy. Um, sorry, I must have missed something there, Ben. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyways, I'm about to get out of here, but I just uh, wanted to review these and... Um, you know, there, there was, uh, you know, um, a lot of talk about this and I wanted to make sure that people had uh, a review of these and, um, maybe if he wants to pull them down and tweak them and put them back up, maybe that would be a good idea. Or if he thinks that they're, they're satisfactory, then that's his right too. you know, go ahead and do that too. Um, but I, if I would, um, uh, I, I would take a pass on playing live or recording with these. They just wouldn't work for me. So, um, well, I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate you guys watching. I got to get out of my chair to turn this off because, uh, you know, for some reason my computer is just a spinning wheel of death on it. So, uh, take care guys. Cheers. Thanks for watching. And I will catch you on the next live or review or tutorial that I do. Have a good evening, everybody.